Why hello, Felicia. Thanks for joining us in this new episode. We are pulling up to some friends' houses that we made when we were in Assateague. John and Cindy, we parked next to them for two nights and had some great conversation. And they said, hey, when you're up in this area, if you're up in this area, swing on by. And so we are, and it is in a beautiful part of Pennsylvania. Probably won't, you know, we're really bad about filming our friends, or maybe we're good about filming our friends. So you probably won't get to actually see them, meet them. Um, but they live in a really beautiful part of Pennsylvania, just next to the Allegheny Mountains, in a town called Titusville, Pennsylvania, which is um, reminiscent of our family in Titusville, Florida. So anyway, we are, uh, we're in this dirt road that we got to by accident, but I'm not mad. Sometimes I get mad when I end up on dirt roads on accident. It's just, it's pretty gorgeous. So we're gonna hang out with them tonight. Cindy wanted to cook dinner, so we'll have dinner, and then she's actually having knee surgery in the morning, and she's super excited about it because it's gonna make her feel better, but we feel bad that we're showing up on the night before surgery. So we're gonna have an early dinner, hang out and talk for a little bit, we'll have an early night, and then we're headed off toward, uh, toward Gettysburg again, in that general direction, toward yeah. the dairy out in Shippensburg. But we are back in Pennsylvania, well, I apologize that this is kind of a talking and not showing part of the video. Um, but as we said, we don't really show a lot of the interaction with the people we meet. Because it's kind of weird, like, hi, I'm Chris, I'm this, Lindsay, it's this awkward, can I put a camera in your face? Yeah, shoving and a camera in people's like, face. Oh, hey, Lindsay, I'm going to go shake their hand. It's just awkward. Grab the camera. Yeah. Like, go give them a hug, I'll grab the camera. It's, it's, just it's kind of awkward. So we don't do it. <laughs> we don't have that person walking around filming us. So you got to bear with us when we talk about some of these interactions that we have with people because that is truly who we are is called to wander. It's all about the people we meet and the impact that we have on people's lives, including yourselves for watching and continuing to be a part of our journey, but also the people we meet that impact our lives. rub off on us. Yeah. Like, and John and Cindy are examples of how random chance Lindsay books a campsite in Assateague. Mm -hmm. There are other sites she could have booked, but she liked this particular one on this particular day. We made it, made a point to get there. And then we pull up and right away, John was working on something in his camper, which to me is like, ding, ding, ding. I can't fix anything. It's pretty obvious to me that you I can't can. fix it, but I can go over and I can try I to can talk help. through and, and I've got tools and all that. So I formed a quick bond with John because I offered a, a, a voltmeter to him and he was able to fix a light issue that he had in his RV. We began talking and just ended up now driving, I don't want to say out of our way, but it's kind of out of our way to visit them at their home because they invited us and that's just that's just how we are with yeah. with people and and the breadcrumbs that we follow that we believe even though we say we're called to wander the wander is more intentional from a standpoint of when we meet people and they point us in different directions and we go and we do certain things so this is a talking head part and I know you guys like to see stuff more than hear us talk but I really cannot move past the movement in my heart right now of how kind John and Cindy are and how well they've treated us and just in passing, you know, two nights in Assateague and just yeah. talking with them a couple times. They opened up their home to us, cooked a meal. Cindy's actually going in for orthopedic knee surgery right now. So even though she had that surgery bright and early, she still invited yeah. us over the night before, cooked a huge meal. We sat around the table talking about all kinds of things. And one of the things that we ended up talking about was how she appreciated meeting people like us to see that there was hope for people in the world that that we weren't it was not as bad as people out there yeah and of course that you know it humbles us but we want to encourage you whoever's watching this wherever you're watching this we're not anything special we're just two people that we believe the world is supposed to be closer through human interaction and we're setting out on this crazy adventure just to meet people and to see cool things and to live this what we call abundant life that we're called into, but it's so simple wherever we are just to pay attention to the people around you. And it's tough, I think, politically, this environment has divided so many people yeah. and it's really tough. You have to be intentional about making those connections with people. But we have with John and Cindy, and I believe they will be a part of our story. Don't know how long, but they are a part of it now. And so that means they're always a part of the story. Anytime we're within an hour or two of here, I can tell you yep, we'll come the truck, say hi. our RV will, will come over here and we will say hi and hang out. 
anytime they're out and about, if we can make it happen to be near them, they're great people to be around. And they're just the tip of the iceberg of who's actually out there on the road. So we know some of you aren't on the road. Some of you are on the road in other countries. Some of you wish you're on the road. Some of you can't be on the road, don't have the money for, for it, don't have the life circumstance. It's not about just being on the road. Although I think I enjoy the road part of it is because I can't predict anything. <laughs> it's not like we're going to work the same way every day and we're seeing the same people and driving the same, you know, routes and routines. Every day is literally different and people are transient. We either go into their hometown or we meet people that are wandering around just like us. And we can't control it, it's just boom, it happens. And I think that's the exciting part is, I don't know who we're gonna meet in the next four hours as we're driving, but I can tell you we're gonna drive. Yep. And hopefully we're gonna go back to the dairy that we introduced you to before, that is phenomenal people, amazing food, great harvest host location in Southern Pennsylvania, 30 miles outside of Gettysburg in Shippensburg. That is our goal. But first, hopefully, we're going to get to go see the weather maker. Oh! You know who I'm talking about? We get to go meet Puxatani Phil? If that's how you say his name. I don't know. <laughs> we are so close to Puxatani, Pennsylvania, that we would be foolish not to go 30 oh, minutes out of cool. our way to go check out. He's we're not like... Meet Phil. But he doesn't just hang out there. I don't know but that you. Might. I don't know that you can meet him. Meg. Maybe he's got some buddies that just hang out, and he just shows up on on that first day of, of uh, whatever it works, however it works out that day, that first February. day, February or whatever. I don't know. It's not the first day of spring because he's supposed to tell us when spring is. But anyway, you guys are good at correcting me. I don't. I don't know the story. I just know that Bill Murray did an awesome job in that movie. And <laughs> I'm kind of excited to go check it out. If they filmed it there, I don't even know if they filmed it there. It could Probably have all not. been in Hollywood. Man, that's sad. Anyway, we're going to go hopefully check out the hometown of Puxatawney Phil, and, uh, and hopefully we can get there. Let's do it. Maybe we'll get to beat him. Maybe we'll get to... I can tell you, it is going to be an early winter. I don't care what the groundhog yeah. says about spring. It is an early winter. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. Well, that's also because we drove toward it instead of <laughs> away from it. This time last year, we were pulling away. Oh, look who it is. Oh, they're back. John's back. I'm going to go say goodbye to John, not on camera, and uh, we'll check in with you later. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. We're at Gobbler's Knob, home of Punk's Tony Phil. I didn't even know it was called Gobbler's Knob. Well, now you know. Yeah, I uh, never thought I'd ever be here. But we're in the area, so why not stop? See if we can meet Phil. You know what I can't believe? Not one scene from the movie Groundhog Day was filmed in Punk's Tony. They made it all up. You can hate the director now, like I do, but it was filmed in Illinois not in Punxsutawney. So every scene there that I was like, oh sweet, I'm gonna go look for the hole that he steps his foot into and oh, watch the first step, it's a doozy. That's not here. The park, the bed and breakfast, all that stuff is not here in Punxsutawney. But Phil is here somewhere and we're gonna look for Phil. No idea, there's no signs. No idea, no there's signs. There's no signs that say where he is. I figured maybe they would have a sign. But, but I don't, unless that, I, I see like a sign there. With the fence. That probably says keep out. It looks like an information sign, you know, like a little plaque. This is where they this do the ceremony. Is, yeah, obviously. But I doubt he's in here. So early next year, you'll see this on the news at some point. It's kind of cool being here. There's his little closet. It's not his home. Oh, but it's real. It's 
It's a real tree? Yeah, I mean, it's just a real stump. It's not locked. You want me to open it? Maybe he's in there. And maybe, maybe he's gonna eat your face. This is cool. So after being disappointed that we went to Gobbler's Knob and, and Phil wasn't there, we found out that Phil actually lives we found out that Phil actually lives in town, in the park, in this little place right here, and Lindsay found him. He's at the library. Smart little guy. He's got a little burrow. He's asleep right there in the little cave. You can't see anything but there. a shadow. But he's got like a whole full on carrots, broccoli, romaine lettuce, corn, sweet potatoes. Describe, My goodness. Describe him for the camera since we can't actually film in there. He's brown and fluffy. Brown and fluffy, all right. He's, so, all, he's curled up in a ball. So he's a rabbit? Right there. Or a cat? He's Brown and fluffy. Know, a cross between a rabbit and a cat? I don't know. Looks kind of like a prairie, like a fat, oversized prairie dog. Fat, oversized prairie dog. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there, we just, we, there. we can't film it. I wonder if they make it that way on purpose. Maybe I should have read the rules. Yeah. No? Oh. So this was our little detour stop to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. It was fun. And now we're gonna continue carrying on backwards on out of here. What do you say, Phil? He's big. It's a big groundhog. That is a, hat. That is a huge groundhog. He's bigger than me. Well, I guess he's about as tall as me, but the hat makes him appear taller. He's not, he's not moving, he's not talking. Made it back to Waydell's Dairy, just outside of Shippenburg, Pennsylvania. Awesome harvest host. Lamar knew exactly who we were, was expecting us. He's super busy, so this is obviously a hot spot. We don't have to tell you about it, but now that we have, you're definitely want to stop here because everybody and their brother is stopping here. Uh, he's going to have five or six RVs by the time the night's done. So anyway, it's beautiful, it's peaceful, amazing sunset again. The colors are kicking. Huckleberry keeps getting shocked. But he's not. I guess it is on. His tail hits it and then he doesn't feel it. You okay, buddy? <laughs> what, baby? You okay? You keep running back and forth. Oh gosh, there he goes. <laughs> You're fine. I think it's it, okay. there's a wire that connects it to, I think, make it alive, but I don't know. Abby is touching it with her back. Yeah. Maybe it just startles him. Yeah. Anyway, we're here for the night and we're gonna settle in. Lindsay's gonna cook some chicken pasto, pist, pisto, pesto, pasta, pesto, pesto chicken. Real pesto, I make it from scratch. She's making it from scratch, which means we're gonna go, I gotta go wring the chicken's neck and get the chicken cleaned because she's making it from scratch. We gotta go and uh, make the pesto grind the pasta. What's it called? You put it in that little grinder, is that right? It's not a grinder. Yeah, whatever. It flattens the dough. Yeah, we, we gotta do all that. So we're making it from scratch. We're not really making it from scratch, but she's making the, the pesto from what's it called basil basil i use basil and spinach and, and walnuts and garlic and olive oil and parmesan cheese and garlic and garlic yeah. okay good i like and garlic lemon juice. and lemon juice i don't know about that yeah okay it brings out all the flavors so stop talking let's get into this let's go <laughs> good night we don't know what's happening tomorrow we'll see you tomorrow well, we shared the last time that we were here how much we really enjoyed lamar as a host and uh, so I asked, it's not usual for Harvest Host, but I did ask if we could spend another night here. And I, I kind of figured he'd say yes, but I also wanted to make sure he knew we were willing to do whatever it took to be a good guest. So I asked if there was anything I could do to help out. And he got a big smile on his face. He told me that the turkey food had spilled out everywhere and uh, that it needed to be cleaned up. 
I thought he was joking, but it really did spill out everywhere. I don't have any boots that I could put on and go and clean up. So instead he said, how about you take the truck into town and get the new tires put on it? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna head into town, drive his truck into town, go swap out the tires for him, and then I'll come back and see if there's anything else that we can do to help out. We really love this place. We really love helping people, as you know, and connecting with people. So this is like the best of both worlds to be out here in this beautiful open space and, uh, and to be able to be a positive part of other people's lives. Lindsay, that looks like an egg sandwich right there. Yes, it is, Chris. What on earth would you be doing eating eggs after all this time of not eating them? Not being able to eat them. So I love eggs. And back when we were in Baja, I picked up E. coli. Well, it took six months to figure that out. And while figuring, trying to figure it out what I had, I was not able to eat eggs. They made me really, really sick to my stomach, which really was awful because I really, really, really enjoy eating eggs. Probably like one of my favorite foods. So have not been able to eat eggs since January of this year. It is now and the end of October. It's now, yeah. Well, for about two weeks now, my stomach has been doing amazing. Like, no issues, no cramps. Uh, I've been able to almost eat whatever I want. And I decided, you know, we're at this amazing harvest host and they have these wonderful pastured organic eggs from their chickens here. And I decided I'm going to try and eat an egg. So I ate an egg yesterday. Waited an hour, was fine. Two hours goes by, was fine. And then by the end of the day, I had completely forgotten that I had eaten an egg that morning. And we were, now you're eating another one. Yeah, now I'm eating another one. It did not hurt my stomach. So oh, I am so excited. Oh my gosh. Can I have a sandwich? No. I'm gonna do breakfast. This is the most delicious breakfast I've had in a long time. Well, you just hurt my feelings because I've made you cereal before. <laughs> oh my gosh. Today I want to talk about why we love Harvest Host so much. And there's a lot of reasons from the low cost and the amazing places to camp. But also the hosts are probably our favorite part about where we camp when we camp with Harvest Hosts. And we are out right now at a wonderful dairy, Waydell's Dairy, outside of Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, about 30 minutes from Gettysburg. It's the ideal place to camp if you want to get to Gettysburg without spending $60, $75 on a campground. Um, it is a phenomenal, quiet place. You can get amazing products, which is one of the things we definitely love about Harvest Host is stocking up our refrigerator with the things that we want and buy and need, but it supports the small businesses like the Waydells. So Lamar and his wife Kathleen are incredible hosts. We stopped here as we were traveling north from Florida and we loved it so much that we decided we wanted to stop on our way back. We've bought milk, we've bought butter, we've bought cheese, we've bought ground beef, honey, Pennsylvania maple syrup. We have bought everything they had to offer because we'd buy that stuff anyway and because it supports their family. So it's a great combination when you camp with Harvest Host, you get to come to beautiful places and meet wonderful people and you get to help them and they help you by buying the things that they sell. Um, we also were able to help Lamar and just do small things from going and taking their truck in to get tires put on to helping them upgrade their Harvest Host and their Google Maps information so that you can find them so that you can enjoy camping here. We can't say enough about this family. We can't say enough about how well they host us. And we do hope and want to encourage you to make the opportunity to come and join Harvest Host first, and then of course, come here to this dairy. Waydell's Dairy in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. We'll be leaving all the information in the description below, how you can become a Harvest Host member if you're not already, and how you can connect with this awesome family for a great opportunity to camp out here at the dairy in a beautiful part of Pennsylvania, the jumping off point for Gettysburg or on your way out of Gettysburg if you've stopped there. It's 
almost perfectly between Harper's Ferry and Gettysburg. If you wanted to do both of those, this is a great place to be. So again, we've enjoyed our time here so much that we've done it twice. And if we're ever back in the area, we will of course give them a call and plan on stopping by as well. Well, hanging out in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. This is the first time we've done that. So uh, it's kind of nice to uh, add some first experiences after two and a half, almost three years on the road. We, we drove at night, which we kind of haven't done. I don't remember the last time we drove at night. Well, to get back to Florida. To get back to Florida. And yeah. we drove like all day and all night and all day and all night for two and a half days. Anyway, we drove at night because we had a wonderful, awesome experience with Lamar and Kathleen, his wife. Before we left, it was um, kind of a terrible time for them. They had some some business stuff going on with inspections and all that and um, and just ruffled their feathers and so it was kind of great to be able to sit and talk and we kind of laughed about a lot of different things and we helped them with their harvest host information so you can find them on there you'll see some beautiful pictures that Lindsay took and uh, and hopefully you'll find the place better because we're able to help with the directions to get there but it was fun just hanging out with them and it bled into sunset and then it bled into dark and we met another um, couple first night on the road for them, which was pretty cool to get to talking with them. And we just got in a whole bunch of conversations. It was really hard to leave, but we have left the dairy and we are now in no man's land. We crossed through West Virginia, Maryland, out of Pennsylvania, and now we're in Virginia. And we really don't know what to do from this point forward. So I'm gonna wrap this video up right here. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We do appreciate you following along our journey. Sometimes it's not as exciting. Sometimes it's all chopped up into tiny little pieces of what in the heck are we doing because that's our life on the road. We don't always know what we're doing, but we do enjoy being out here. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, leave a positive comment, like this video, share our story with your friends and family, anybody you think we can help encourage, influence, inspire and inform on how they too can get out and pursue the abundant life on the road. We will see you sometime once we figure out what the heck is going on in Virginia.